The Bo Horvat trade pretty much kicked off our NHL trade bonanza as we're going to see many more players go places within the next month. One team that everyone should be on the lookout for are the Winnipeg Jets who have had an amazing season this year, sitting second in the Central Division and in the Western Conference. They are doing much better than they have been the last two seasons or so with forward Kyle Connor leading the team with 59 points, Josh Morrissey in third place amongst defensemen in points with 53, and Connor Hellebuck having a potential Vesna winning season. He's been remarkable once again and is going to be a potential candidate for the trophy for the third time in his career. He's already won the award once, so let's see if he can do it twice. Based on all of that, it's fair to assume that the Winnipeg Jets are on an upward trajectory. However, there's still more work to be done. They are going to be buyers at this year's deadline and should look to get a defenseman rather than a forward, which most people are expecting them to receive. Now, there are some really good defensemen on the trade bait list this year in Vladislav Gavrikov, John Klingberg, Shane Gostaspier, and the leading defenseman in points, Eric Carlson. However, why not look at arguably the biggest trade bait defenseman this year and Jacob Chikrin? Now, let's briefly go over Jacob Chikrin. He was drafted in 2016 by the Coyotes in the first round and has become one of the best offensive defensemen in the league. His name was very much involved in trade talks last year after his stellar 2020-21 campaign, and he continues to be thrown in rumors then and now. A lot of Jets fans have been complaining about forwards and the need for secondary scoring, but in my opinion, that's not their biggest problem right now. They have a huge gap on defense with a lack of talented right-handed defensemen. It's not a horrible gap in the roster, but it's a move that can benefit the team and also get them closer towards becoming a top candidate for the Stanley Cup. Currently, the Coyotes are looking to stack up as many draft picks as possible to continue rebuilding around Clayton Keller and company. The Jets are a team that should be on red alert because they have the tools to facilitate a trade that would benefit both parties. Chikrin has two years left on an advantageous contract and as previously noted would bolster the Jets defense which already has been good on the defensive side. Now before I get attacked by a bunch of Jets fans please understand that the Jets may very well get another forward in some other trade or maybe in this trade though I really doubt it. This video is just solely based on Jacob Chikrin and what he brings to the Winnipeg Jets. Again the Jets defense is average at best if Josh Morrissey doesn't exist. Imagine if the Jets have a career-defining season from Josh Morrissey, which they're doing, and have Jacob Chikrin, who's hit 40 points in 56 games in a very recent time frame. They could literally have the missing right-sided defenseman on the power play, or maybe have two power play quarterbacks if they decide to maybe put Neil Pionk on that top unit and keep Chikrin as the QB for the second line. Not to mention how the Coyotes have also allowed the ninth most goals in the NHL this season, and Chikrin has a plus-minus rating of positive 6. That's the second best on the team. The guy with the highest plus-minus is Nick Bukestad, who has a plus-7 plus-minus. I don't really think much more needs to be said. The Coyotes' defense is really, really bad, and Jacob Chikrin should not have to waste his prime years and even his potential on a defense that's just not up to his standards right now. Aside from the Coyotes, Rick Bowness has done a wonderful job amping up this Jets defense. This team was in the top 15 for goals against last year, and now they are in the top 10 for least amount of goals given up, which really shows what a wonderful job Bowness has done. But don't you think that Chikrin's presence and his dying urge to play in a more competitive environment would more than just solve the one weakness that this Jets defense has been having since two of their top right-handed defensemen left in Jacob Truba and Dustin Bufflin? The stats don't lie about how good the Jets defense has been playing. They currently possess the second best penalty kill in the league, trailing by the Boston Bruins. They have the fourth best goals against average with 2.61, which is amazing considering that the Jets were once a team criticized for its defense, but they found a way to get in the top 10 for preventing goals, which you just gotta love. Whether soccer, basketball, football, or hockey, the old saying goes, defense wins you championships, and to put that in terms for the Jets and Jacob Chikrin, well, Chikrin could arguably seal a leakage in the Jets' problems that have been ongoing for more than two years now. If you somehow haven't heard, the Coyotes are asking quite a lot for Chikrin as a return, and I don't understand why this is shocking so many GMs. You're shopping for a BMW, expecting to pay the price on the sticker you would see on a Ferrari. By the way, I drive a BMW, so I don't want any BMW hate in the comments. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that every team in the league knows how expensive Chikrin is, and that it's important to know what to give Arizona as a return. Since the Coyotes are selling Chikrin, it's best that Kevin Chevaldeoff makes a trade now or before the deadline. There should be honestly no reason to shy away from this move. Money is not an issue for the Jets at all, as they have over $9 million in deadline cap space to play around with per cap friendly. The issue comes to the assets. The Coyotes are either looking for a superstar player to keep long term, which they obviously won't get, as there's no way the Jets will give away Hellebuck or Morzy or any of their top six forwards. Or the second option is that they want draft picks, but high draft picks. We heard an original asking price was two first round picks and a prospect. The Jets have a 2023 first, a 2024 first, and a 2025 first. 
This essentially means that if the Jets want to be on the winning side of this trade, they better make the playoffs and go on a deep run, not just for this year, but for the next two seasons after this one. Unless they decide to trade away players for first round picks, they gotta be on top. They will certainly lose their first round pick this year, and either 2024's or 2025's first rounder as well. But as I've said in pretty much any of my recent trade rumor videos, this is not an issue. And why that's the case is because this is the deepest draft anyone has ever seen since 2015. We will see talent until the second and third rounds, which means that the Jets will still have a good chance to draft good players just by owning a really late first round pick. The Coyotes want as many first round picks as possible. They want Chikrin out, they want Gostaspear out, they want Bukestad out, they want Nick Schmaltz out. They want to pretty much build around Clayton Keller and Logan Cooley by getting young talent in this year's draft. They currently own one first round pick, but have so many second and third round picks in the following drafts from so many different teams like Toronto and the Rangers, they actually have eight second round picks in the next three drafts, not to mention four third round picks in 2024 alone. Maybe they try to deal future draft picks for this year's draft picks, which could work, Either way, the Jets don't have a very valuable first-round pick for 2023, but they could give the Coyotes several first-rounders for the future years to come. Then the Coyotes could potentially swap those future picks for picks in this year's draft. Rarely does that ever happen, though. With young forward prospects in Dylan Sandberg, Chaz Lucius, and Brad Lambert, along with defensive prospects in Villa Hagnola and Rucker McGrady, the Jets could also give the Coyotes one of these guys instead of giving up a first-round pick. Be aware, though, that they will have to give up a first-rounder in any given scenario unless, say, Josh Morrissey or Connor Hellebuck appear in this conversation. Maybe Chevelle Dayoff can put together several combinations with picks and players that can get the interest of the Coyotes. The only remaining question is who do the Coyotes choose and are the Jets willing to pay that price? To be fair, the asking price is right. I assume the Jets do not just use Jacob Chikorin as some rental. He's on a very team-friendly $4.6 million deal and has two years left on that deal and won't become an unrestricted free agent until the 2025 summer. It's once again a deal worth noting. Also, considering the fact that Winnipeg has been heavily criticized for their lack of depth scoring as they've been plagued with injuries throughout December, they should really consider adding an offensive-minded defenseman. They have seven regular season starters out and managed to go 9-7 and seven through December. But just imagine how perfect of a match this can be for both teams. In the end, a trade in any sport is supposed to benefit both sides, right? The Jets are a powerhouse team this year. They have arguably the best center depth in the NHL, with Mark Scheifele, Pierre-Luc Dubois, and Adam Lowry. They have good veteran presence in Stanley Cup winner and former captain Blake Wheeler. They have elite wingers in Kyle Connor and Nikola Ehlers. You have amazing prospects in Cole Perfetti, a guy with an unbelievably high hockey IQ. Then you consider how they have great defense led by Josh Morrissey and a Vesna candidate in Collar Hellebuck. This team is certainly going to be a cup favorite this year. They are finally a Stanley Cup caliber team that can certainly go on a deep run, perhaps better than what they did back in 2018 when they lost in the Western Conference Final to Vegas. This team is ready and will become even scarier with Chikrun, however there are some big downsides to this as well. Jacob Chikrun has declined a lot since his 2020-21 campaign. He went from 41 points in 56 games to just 21 points in 47 games. Now, I know he was hurt for a massive period of time, but he only scored 7 goals. A year before that, he scored 18. This year, he only has 25 points, 5 of them are goals. Jacob Chikrin is projected to put up nearly 50 points, which has got to make people think, well, okay, is he really worth it in the end? Because Neil Pionk, another right-handed defenseman, is also projected to put up 50 points this year in Winnipeg. So why would we want to make our cap space a bigger issue when we have a cheaper version of Chikrin already? Also consider how Dubois, Hellebuck, Shifley, and Wheeler will all become UFAs in 2024, and most likely all but Wheeler will be re-signed. Maybe Dubois leaves too if he wants to go back to his home in Montreal. Montreal, then realize how Chikrin's contract ends the same year these guys do. How will they manage to re-sign all of them? They have a year or so to figure out that whole situation, but for now, they want the cup and they can seriously be a fear team in the West if they can act on their weaknesses. What's good about this team is that over the last few years when they had these heartbreaking exits, their weaknesses have been fixed one by one. I think they can easily fix one of their biggest issues in recent time with Chikrin. This trade will most likely be the same thing as the Raptors and Kawhi Leonard. Back in 2018, the Raptors acquired Leonard as a rental, and he would lead the Raptors to their first NBA championship in history in 2019 and dip the following season. So let me know your thoughts in the comments about this Chikrin trade to Winnipeg. Does it happen? Does it not? If so, who really gets the bigger benefit? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you guys for tuning in and have a wonderful day.